Hi, I'm Ashley Hawkers, the fan of the Gilmer County Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent, and today I'm going to walk you through how to do a whip and tongue graft on apple. Before we actually do the graft, it's really important that you label your containers, have pre-made labels ready, have your budwood, rootstock, and the tape you will use to affix the graft together. To get started, and as you can see, um, we had limited stock available, and so we have different sizes here. And one of the objectives for grafting is to try to have a similar diameters from the scion leaves, so uh, the portion that's going to be fruiting for you, and the root stock. So, since we have some mishmash pieces together, we'll do what we can to make an alignment on one side of the rootstock. I always like to get started with the rootstock first. And where you would want to uh, make your first cut would be a few inches above where the rooting zone is going to be. So we're going to go right here, make a diagonal cut. is to make sure when you cut your scion that the buds are facing upward. We don't want to graft the piece upside down. So uh, the goal for this is to make sure the cambium between the rootstock and scion align and that is located right between the xylem and the phloem, right beneath the um, bark you can see here. To make our next cut in the whip and tongue, the actual tongue, so we'll move about one third distance from the top and make a small cut against the tongue. And we'll do the same for the scion piece. And then if you'd like, you can work your way back down, though it's not necessary. All right, we have just completed the whip and tongue graft for apple. We've uh, wrapped the graft union to secure it from the outside elements and prevent it from drying out. Now we will pot up the, uh, the grafted plant and water it in. I'm Josh Fooder with UGA Extension here with my good friend Yanni Chin. And we are going to show how to um, do a graft when your rootstock is considerably larger than the scion you have. And so I've got some pretty small caliper material here for my scion and this rootstock is pretty large. Whip and tongue or bench graft is probably not practical in this situation. I really like this graft, um, both where we have to use it, but also for, for uh, first time grafters or, or people new to grafting. I think this is a much safer type of graft in terms of risk of cutting yourself. So uh, what we're gonna do is a cleft graft. Yanni, I made a straight line cut, but if we think about how these bypass pruners work, you know, there is a little bit of smashing that happens on that harder uh, stationary side. So I try to put the sharp side, the blade side down on the part of the uh, rootstock that I'm wanting to leave. So. Um, and then it's just make a um, simple cut right down the middle and we don't have to you know try to force this just work you know with the knife gently move it in and you can see nice and easy that's probably about as far as we want to go we don't want to splay this piece open and lose that kind of natural um, you know tension we just want to open it up like that and then the nice thing is um, you know, when we have a small piece like this, 
we're just basically sharpening this down you know, to flat sides on either side. Again, the goal with, with grafting is always, you know, maximizing the cambial uh, contact. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, again, we're trying not to cut, touch these cut surfaces with the oils on our fingers and things like that. So I'm going to kind of open that up with my knife and then just slide this dude in. Um, and you can see here something to pay attention to is see that bud that's kind of halfway cut off. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it off completely. Now, being very careful to not you know, splay open that bark any more than it already is. Um, but we don't want that bud, you know, thinking it's actually going to try to grow and, you know, maybe use up some resources from this young growing plant. All right. So, and then trying to match it as much of where my cuts are. We're just going to touch cambium on one side. If you can see there, because that's all we were going to get anyway. So nice and flush on one side. We'll then wrap it up with parafilm like we would any other type of graph. And then here at the top, you can see, we just want that parafilm to stretch and go over and close that area. And I try to wrap a few more times. We'll use two pieces here um, because we don't want that to split open and you know expose all that to drying winds and sun and everything else. That's good enough right there. You know, I try to just leave two, three buds max. So, you know, one, two, three at the most. We'll cut it right there. And our cut in that we just cut, a little dab of nail polish is really all you need to keep that from drying out uh, down into the scion. And a label. Uh, this is Roxbury Russet. So a label on there. It's ready to ready to let sit in the basement for a couple weeks. You know, I like to harden mine off. I leave them down here in the basement where it's cool and dark. Ten days, two weeks, and then I'll plant them. And I'll plant them to about right there. Clef graft can work when our scion and rootstock are the same size. Generally, you're going to probably do a, a whip and tongue graft. But I think this is a nice graft because it doesn't take much knife skill. And again, I'm just going in really, really slow, really slow, letting the knife do the work, splitting it about that far. And you can see here, you know, scion and rootstock are about the same size. And you can see here, I'm just making a long pulling cut and we'll match on that side right there. So we're still just matching on one side, but you can get the idea, you know, nice long slit, matching more or less at the top, and just maximizing that cambial contact. Clef graft is a much more stable way. If you're short on material, if you don't have a lot of extra to, you know, potentially lose, and you're still learning these knife skills, um, this may be a more a guaranteed way to have a successful graft. Um, that's about all. Uh, this is a valuable graft, especially when we have, you know, quite smaller material. Thank you.